Hi, and welcome to That's Roddy Mysterious, a podcast of short tales about true mysteries. What happened to the Flannan Isles Lightkeepers? Who was responsible for the Gardner Museum heist? I'm not going to solve those mysteries, but they'll be interesting to learn about. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. Transcripts for all episodes can be found at thatsruddymysterious.wordpress.com. No apostrophe and no exclamation point. Today's tale is about the Max Headroom incident. Max Headroom was a fictional character who was advertised as the first computer-generated TV presenter. He was, however, played by real-life actor Matt Frewer, wearing prosthetics and sitting in front of a blue screen. Max Hedrum was known for his arrogant wit, stuttering and pitch-shifting voice, and biting commentary on current events. Max Hedrum debuted in April of 1985 on British Channel 4 in the made-for-TV movie Max Hedrum, 20 Minutes into the Future. This movie was his origin story. In the movie, a journalist was seen fleeing from his enemies on a motorcycle. He crashed the motorcycle into a parking garage barrier that read Max Headroom 2.3 meters. At the time of the movie, maximum height signs in the UK read Max Headroom. Two days after the movie was broadcast in the UK, Max Headroom began hosting Channel 4's The Max Headroom Show, on which he commented on current events, introduced music videos, and eventually began interviewing live guests. The Max Headroom Show was brought to the U.S. during its second and third years on TV. Max also became the spokesman for New Coke, using the catchphrase, Catch the Wave. The incident that became known as the Max Headroom Incident occurred on November 22, 1987 in the Chicago area. The first incident happened on station WGN-TV during the sports segment of the 9 p.m. newscast. It occurred at 9.14 p.m. Someone broke into the broadcast. The screen first flashed to black, then, 15 seconds later, video of someone wearing a Max Headroom costume appeared. Max was swaying back and forth and bouncing erratically. He was sitting in front of a corrugated metal background. The only sound that could be heard was a loud buzzing sound. The video played on the screen for about 25 seconds before the station's engineers were able to regain control of the signal. The newscaster appeared on the screen again, saying, Well, if you're wondering what's happened, haha, so am I. The second incident occurred about two hours later, around 11.15 p.m. This time, the intrusion was on Channel 11, WTTW, a PBS member station. WTTW was showing British television show Doctor Who. They were playing the episode Horror of Fang Rock when again the video cut out. This time, when the video came back, lines like those from a VCR could be seen on the screen. Just like in the first incident, the screen flashed to a video of someone in a Max Headroom costume swaying in front of a corrugated metal background. Unlike the last time, however, this time Max spoke. Max made references to real Max Headroom advertisements, including those for New Coke, holding up a can of Pepsi and saying, Catch the Wave. Max then flipped off the camera and sang and hummed tunelessly. He then paused before saying that he'd made a masterpiece for the world's greatest newspaper nerds. Max then made reference to Michael Jackson, holding up a glove similar to the one Jackson was known to wear and saying, My brother is wearing the other one. He then put the glove on, saying, But it's dirty. It's like you got bloodstains on it. Following this, Max made some very crude comments and gestures while screaming, They're coming to get me, and other things. The second intrusion lasted just under a minute and a half. There were no engineers at the WTTW station to reclaim the signal. Because there was no one at WTTW at the time of the intrusion, the only copies of that intrusion that exist came from those taping Doctor Who that night. Immediately following the first intrusion, station engineers and the FCC began investigating. The FCC took the intrusions very seriously. The day after the intrusions, FCC spokesman Phil Bradford said, 
I would like to inform anybody involved in this kind of thing that there's a maximum penalty of $100,000, one year in jail, or both. WTTW also made a statement showing that they were taking the intrusion seriously. WTTW spokesman Anders Joachim said, All in all, there are some who may view this as comical, but it's a very serious matter because illegal interference of a broadcast signal is a violation of federal law. Eventually, the FCC was able to determine how the intrusions were pulled off. The hackers used their own dish or antenna to interrupt the signal. The FCC were even able to figure out the most likely location for where that dish or antenna was placed. They were never able to figure out who the culprits were, however. Over the years, many have speculated who may have been involved in the intrusions. Rumors have swirled, most of them being too out there to even investigate. Some believe actor and producer Eric Fournier was the culprit. People who believe this theory point to the similarities between his films and the hacker's footage. People who know him, however, say he couldn't have done it. Fournier died in 2010, so he's unable to confirm or deny that he was involved. The Max Headroom incident has received a lot of interest over the years, but it wasn't the first or the last hack of its kind. In fact, an April 27, 1986 hack into the broadcast of HBO's The Falcon and the Snowman led the U.S. federal government to make hacking into television stations a felony. By the time of the Max Headroom incident, there were harsh penalties for the crime. Who hacked into two Chicago-area television stations on November 22, 1987? What was their goal? How were they able to elude the FCC for so long? What do you think? If you're listening on Spotify, scroll down and let me know what you think. Thanks for listening to today's episode of That's Ready Mysterious. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a review and follow That's Ready Mysterious to be updated about new episodes. Tune in next Tuesday for another thought-provoking tale.